this video will show you how to use uh, create and use multiple risk models in risk register uh, by project balm uh, to access the multiple risk models feature we'll start out by going to settings uh, then to apps we'll see listed down the left hand side our various uh, jira applications we go to the risk models menu item and here you'll see a list of all the different risk models that are in play um, there's always going to be a default risk model which is the risk model that projects use if none other is defined let's open that up and just have a look so you can see the risk uh, matrix definition is up here um, the levels of risk are next the impacts and the probabilities. So all the features you need to define your risk model. You can change just by clicking on it. I'm doing here, I'm just clicking and that just cycles through the different levels of risk. Uh, you can also change the dimensions of the matrix, the impact and the probability. I can add an impact, for example, that says new impact and that shows up there. And let me give this a name, negligible. Well, what's less than negligible? Oh, there we are. Well, I've picked a, uh, a difficult word to spell, or difficult for me, less than negligible. And you can see that's popped that up here. It has to squeeze it in there because that's a little bit of a uh, a lengthy impact but you can see how it works and I can obviously um, do the same thing with probabilities uh, let's call this uh, zero the probability I'm um, very unlikely there's zero probability perhaps we want that there for some reason you can see that shows up there uh, and of course we can add a new level of risk as well low and we'll call that um bottom again not uh, very good names and we'll give that a weird color like that and then we can cycle through you can see we go bottom low medium high extreme i could set all those to bottom i could set these to uh something a little bit different like that I might say that's actually bottom as well so you can see how you can very easily configure your risk register and all your options are there now I'm not going to save those changes I could save those and have them apply but this is my default risk model I'm just going to discard those changes we click on all risk models head back to the risk models screen and you can see I've defined a, a, a whole group of different risk models. I've got one for auditing. I've got one for business risks. I've got one for marketing risks. And if you go into these other risk models, you'll see uh, that there's a project uh, field defined. And this tells you which projects these apply to. Uh, so this one applies to Project Delta which is the one that we looked at um, before. Uh, it was open a moment ago. So let me open up Project Delta. Let me go to Risks. And you'll see that risk model there is the same as this risk model here. But let me change that. We'll make that medium like that. We'll save that change. Then I'll go and reload. Let's keep an eye on that cell there. Take a moment to get the new retrieve the new risk model. And aha, that suddenly turned orange as we would expect because I've changed the risk model. Now you can add other projects in here as well. You just start to type. Let me type in A, uh, another risk project. We've added that in. It says due, this is currently assigned a technical risk model. Let's move it to the current risk model, we say confirm. And there, this risk model now applies to another risk project as well. I won't open that up, but if we open that up, we would see uh, that risk model applies there, just like in Project Delta. 
It's also very easy to add a risk model. We just go up there, click on add a risk model. We'll call this our new risk model. We won't apply any projects. Uh, let's say we wanted this to be a four by four grid. We just wanted this to be a very um, a simpler one. We might just eliminate these impacts, these uh, and probabilities, the top level one. That's reduced that to a four level risk matrix, uh, risk model. Um, and we might say, oh, that should be medium there, but otherwise it looks pretty good. Um, we might make that medium. And then we save our changes, not currently applied to any projects, but the new risk model is now displayed in our list of risk models. And we can see it, it actually tells you there which projects it applies to. It doesn't apply to uh, any at the moment. Um, marketing risk model, that applies to Project Delta and an, another risk project. So this is really uh, yeah, very useful, uh, especially for those of you who might have multiple departments who are using uh, different risk, uh, want to use a different risk model because you have different risk appetites. Uh, it's also very uh, very useful if you want to track opportunities as well. So here I've actually defined an opportunity risk model. Uh, some of you not only track threats, you also track opportunities and you want a different looking model for that. It's very common to use these uh, blue colors for opportunity uh, uh, risk models. And so you can actually track your risks and your opportunities in a single instance now. And we can uh, go and have a look at what that looks like. I've set up a, um, I've set up a dashboard here, the opportunities and threats dashboard. And you can see that there. I haven't actually put many uh, opportunities in there, but you've got a dashboard that shows you on the one side, your uh, your threats using the conventional colors and on this side here it shows you your opportunities that's just one example of a way you could use multiple risk models but there actually are uh, many many different ways